talk about, man. It's a challenge with some Mopar love. That's right. You know, I love how easy these things come apart these days. You yeah. know, it's like they snap them together almost on the assembly line. <laughs> Gotta love that. It's a uh, 2012 RT Challenger. And we're gonna pull this air inlet off, so we're gonna get a lot more power out of this thing. Now we started out with a whopping 372 horsepower on the automatic, 400 foot-pounds, which, you know, is a pretty sizable number. Not bad for 340 cubic inches. You know, 345 was the 5.7. Again, like you said, 370, 372 horsepower, a little bit more with the manuals, uh, but we can bolt on in 30 minutes, you know, 20 horsepower with cold air intake and, and a little bit more throttle body. So less than 30 minutes, you get 30 plus horsepower. Well, these are a little bit more sizable vehicle than yeah. the Camaro and the Mustang. So a little throwing beefier. a little more horsepower kind of brings you up into the game a little bit, makes them a little more nimble, a little yes. more fun to drive. It does. They are big girls, man. They're like the wheelbase on these things, like 116 cubic inches. A lot of people think they look identical to the old Challengers, you know, the first gens, the 70s. Well, not. They're a lot bigger cars. That wheelbase is, you know, 110, uh, yeah. some of that ballpark. So it's a little bit bigger car even than the earlier 70 models. Now, these are great because they're a muscle car, but they're also yeah. sort of a, like a touring car. You know, they've got a little bit more plush and luxury to them, which makes them nice for an all around daily driver and a beater, you know, when you want to go have some oh. fun. Uh-oh. Floor. I'll get it. Well, the early ones, 1970 to 74, I mean, that yeah. really kicked off. love those cars, man. Those E-bodies. That kind of kicked off the big Mopar pony car craze, you know? Uh, they were a little late to the game, I, I guess. I was going to say, pony car wars really kicked off in 1964 and a half with the Mustang. Yeah. You know, the Camaro came out in 67. so. Man, what happened with Mopar, man? They really came late to the game. Yeah, well, they were killing everything with those big B bodies in the late 60s. But you're right, the pony car craze from Mopar started in 70. Hey, they say the best to last. They saw what Ford Chevy was doing wrong. They approved it. Dude, they sold like 77,000 Challengers in 1970. Unbelievable, right? Yeah, so they're big in 70 and 71, but unfortunately, the smog time started yeah, coming in, you know? It. So just when the good stuff was coming out, Man, the emissions were choking us off, and oh, it's just a shame. Yeah. So that's why a lot of those early ones, the 70, 74s, you know, in total, there weren't a lot of sales. So over the years, you know, the collectors have really grabbed onto them. And you guys have seen the auctions, man. Those prices are through the roof. Yeah, man. Even, uh, and I think that's why these do so well, you know, with, with the people now, because, you know, these popular, they look a lot like those, those early models. And, uh, you know, today we're gonna throw some BBK stuff on it and prove this, uh, this 5.7. This goes, you know, 85 millimeter throttle body. Upgrade on that. You got a cold air intake, easy to add 30 horsepower. Remember back in the day to get 30 horsepower, you had to go from a 383 to a 440. Yeah, <laughs> an engine swap, you yeah, know, right? Yeah, but now with a little bit of tuning, you know, a little bit of air, a little bit of exhaust. I mean, you could pick up 30, 40 ponies, go have a blast. And you know what? You still get that same ride quality, that yeah. same sort of cold start and hot start. But, and these are easy to put on, they're a lot of fun. Now, you know, there was more than just a first gen. There was sort of a earlier yeah. you know, Challenger. It was a 1959 the Silver Challenger. Right, Silver Challenger. Now, I actually have a car so close to that, you wouldn't believe it. They look identical. The funny thing about that Silver Challenger, it's like Bigfoot, man. Right? Nobody knows about it. You can't hardly find anything online about it. It is. It's like an anomaly. But then 1959, there was a two-tone silver, came in a six-cylinder or a V8, like a 361 uh, Challenger, and it wore the first Challenger badge. Uh, I've got one really similar. It's called a Dodge Custom Royal D500. Super rare car. Super cool to see. It's uh, the grill on it. Looks like it's just frowning and really mad. Look cool, they're pretty slick little rides. So everybody you think a 70 through 74, you got a first gen challenger. No, you yeah. really got like a second. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like a, like a half gen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, how you doing on that thing over good, there? Good man. How many screws you got left? Yeah, man, just a couple. Couple? Alright, you got a zip tube over there. Yeah. This guy's ready. I'll plug in my PCV again. So that's all set. All we need now is connect the A to B. We're ready to go rock it out, man. Yeah, you know, it's funny, man, because being a big fan of Mopar and those first-gen Challengers, that 70 through 74, you know, I don't own one. I do own one of these, and uh, I, I own a 2009 Challenger, and it's a 6.1 liter, right? This is the RT. Back in the day, the RT was king, man, right? You could get a, you could get a 446 pack. It was, 
A lot of people on the street will talk about how that 446 pack will battle the 426 Hemi, you know, all day, right? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of you know bench racing about which was better, you know, the right. Hemi and the 440. I mean, both of them are out there just smoking it. Seems like the drag race guys get that little RPM, a little bit of higher flow up there. They're always bragging Hemi, but. On the street, man, I don't know, that 440 is a pretty solid piece. Yeah, it was rated at 390 horsepower, but a lot of guys will tell you on the street, it was the king, you know, it was by far the king. Uh, and again, man, anytime you take uh, those smaller versions, 3,600 pounds versus this guy, well over 4,000, and you have, you know, whether it's 425 horsepower or that 390, it was a pretty bad ride back in 1970, bro. All right, the final piece. Right. Let's see if we can slide that guy in. But it's funny, the guy that designed this is the same guy, a cat named Carl Cam Cameron. He designed the early first gen chargers, like the 66 chargers, right? So they brought him back in 2007, had him uh, put his signature on these guys, and then you got, bam, Dodge's first entry back into the muscle car craze of the early mid 2000s. Kind of cool.